Hello, my name is Sonne Cotard. I'm a fellow at Pembroke College and a geophysicist in the Department of Earth Sciences. I've been in Cambridge for several years now, for a couple years as a junior research fellow at Pembroke College and now since uh, recently as a lecturer in the department where I'm starting to build up a, a group of students and postdocs that in my case work on exploring the deep earth. Um, I have here a very simplified cartoonish view of the deep earth where we have a, a rocky ma solid mantle and then in the interior we have the metallic core which consists of a liquid outer core and a solid inner core. And that is the simplified layered view that people know of the mantle. But when we look at it in detail, we actually see that there's a lot more heterogeneity and a lot more dynamics going on in the mantle, which is shown by this <coughs> busy cartoon here, where we see material coming down and material coming up, and a very uh, image of a very dynamical planet. Um, I should say that it's very dynamical on geological time scales, but we do see evidence of that dynamics every day on our planet, both in destructive for, uh, forces in uh, volcanoes and earthquakes happening, um, but also the dynamics of our planets have given us the continents that we live on and the atmosphere and the air that we can breathe and, and live in. Um, my work to look at the deep earth uh, requires using the waveforms of, of the earthquakes. So we use the waves to map the interior of, of our planet. This is quite similar to medical imaging, where we use waves to map the inside of a body. Uh, in this case, we use the earthquake waves to map the inside of Earth's body. Here's an example of such a waveform data set. And this is for the massive earthquake that happened in Japan in 2011. And we can see here the waveforms as a function of distance away from the earthquake. So you, and this is as a function of time. So we can see the waves arrive later and later as we are further away from the earthquake. When we get to this distance, we see the waves suddenly disappear. And that is because they in start interacting with the core. So in this entire wave field lies tons of information of what is actually happening inside the earth. Um, the interesting thing in my field is that I don't have to travel around to collect this data of the earthquake. I can download all this data from a, a public website, which also means that everybody in the field has more or less the same access to data, and this makes all the science that we produce reproducible by other scientists. One of the recent projects I've been working at is looking at the morphology of these massive piles or blobs or whatever you might call it, that are sitting on the core mantle boundary. And I should mention that in this cartoonish version, we have projected the, the surface topography onto the core mantle boundary for reference in location. But the actual surface is uh, the gray sphere here. And we're looking at these orange and yellow uh, piles that are sitting on the core mantle boundary and are made as slow material. We don't uh, currently know with much certainty what these piles are made of. And so we don't know if they've been around for all of Earth's history and are maybe slowly reducing in volume, or if they've been building up over time. What we do see is that these piles seem to control a lot of the dynamics in the mantle and where we have hot material coming up. And the hot material coming up, for example, forms a lot of the islands in the Pacific, the Hawaiian island, um, through the volcanism that the hot material causes. And that eventually seems to be driven by this heterogeneity in the deep mantle.